After um, reviewing more of the footage, I realized uh, I had no footage of our third camp. Just a handful of photos. And the camp was already half broke. So you don't realize that uh, I had a tarp there to um, kind of finish off the uh, tent section. But back to where we kind of left off here. Um, once again, I'm still learning the GoPro and like all of its apparatus. Um, using the chest rig, you're so much lower than my vantage point. Uh, I'm trying to show you these swans. There's like two giant um, blocks of them out there in the water, but you can't see them. <laughs> you just see just grass. Um, so uh, in the last episode or installment or whatever, I had uh, mentioned a little bit about how like there's a lack of sunlight, and uh, there is. It's just there's not enough time to really complete the river like I've kind of hoped to when when planning this. And it's weird because I kind of knew that the um, sun was going to be an issue, but really to, to make it happen, it would have been, you know, getting up way early before daybreak, cleaning things up at night, and really pushing way harder, and just not making this a fun trip, making it more of a, a mission. So me and Alex have uh, been kind of mission oriented with work for like the past year before doing this trip, so eh, we're just going to call it here and uh, actually just camp out the next day and do no canoeing. We're just going to take it on easy. Uh, we, we thought about moving on to the next dam at least and, you know, kind of saying that we, you know, pushed as hard as we could, but that'll uh, give us something to do in springtime. Alex's little canoe cocoon. Um, he actually camped like this in the uh, third campsite too. And ever since uh, we're kind of more stationary and one, uh, and I know what was going on with our power sources, our, our little battery charger units and whatnot, that um, we had a little bit more time to play with the cameras. But I still didn't get as much footage as I wish I had. Um, not still being used to how to put a lot of these kind of like things together. Like you know, we put on the GoPro here, walking to just grab some water, hoping something will happen. There's <laughs> like nothing going on. It's just two people walking around to get some water. But it was fun to kind of give me a chance to do some jump cut stuff and uh, show off these cool water pumps that uh, Michigan uh, campgrounds or like the state ones have. I don't know um, how many people have ever camped uh, in Michigan, but uh, they are, a lot of the places will have these these cool pumps. And actually, even a lot of the roadside um, like kind of rest stops will even have these pumps. And uh, as a little cool thing about Alex, um, I went kind of outdoorsy stuff with people that haven't done a whole lot of outdoorsy stuff and they get kind of worried about like like drinking water from filters or from pumps like this and um alex never really hesitated he was cool with all that stuff and uh we did a little bit of foraging <clears throat> excuse me while we were here and there wasn't much to be found except uh, one of my favorites which is wintergreen berries and uh usually when i start picking up and eating wintergreen berries people kind of raise an eyebrow when they look at me when I'm eating these little red berries from the ground. But Alex tried them and fell in love with them and started, you know, wanting to gather as many as he could while we were walking around. Which would have been a good time to have the GoPros on too. I don't, I don't know. Like I said, I'm still getting used to this. We got lucky and the sun did come out for a couple hours on this day. Um, we just kind of lazed about on the, the beach soaking up some sun. Didn't get a whole lot of it during this trip. <laughs> it was pretty pretty cold and gray. Um, tonight's actually supposed to be one of the coldest nights on our trip. Even though it's not snowy and looking cold, it's actually going to get really chilly. Um, so we're kind of be fortified in. He's going to throw some packs around the canoe there to kind of block those spots. And uh, there's actually a flap above the tent here I can actually pull down and make the door. So the place uh, that we camped at was like hemmed in mostly with shade, so I had to keep moving this little solar unit to um, keep it in the sun. So that way we still have enough power to keep playing with the camera. This, uh, this shot always reminds me of a, a screensaver. What you cooking? Rocks. Um, once again, it's supposed to be chilly tonight. So I decided to uh, heat up some rocks to give us at least a few hours of some toasty rust. Um, when 
when you do something like this, you got to be careful and have a really lower heat. You don't want them to get too hot too fast. Cold rocks and heat, um, they'll explode if not done right. So do it slow and keep moving around. Um, and also make sure they don't get too, too hot to, uh, to handle. Like I had gloves on, Alex didn't, and it was a little hot for him to handle. So uh, we put the rocks in our sleeping bags about uh, five minutes or so before we crawled into them. And, and talk about a difference. It, um, I mean, it was just radiating heat as I was like um, kind of getting ready for bed. I could just feel it like like toasting off through the through the blankets. So I just kind of up like laying on top of it. I had a, a rock by my feet and a couple on either side of my hips. And just kind of drifted off. It's hard to tell um, how long the, the heat really lasts for the rocks. Um, maybe a couple hours, I don't really know. But either which way, I was up, as I usually am, around 4.35. Um, really chilly. <laughs> so I'm uh, actually warming up a propane tank, so that way I can take my little stove with me to the bathroom, because it's really, really cold. And, uh, yeah, I'm heating up a propane tank with an open flame. I don't really uh, recommend that. The, uh, that's why I'm kind of watching it like a hawk here to make sure that the flames don't turn coarse and start wicking into the can. So yeah, I don't really recommend doing this. Well, the next day is really just pack up camp and uh, get ready for Marie to get here to take us back into civilization. amazing how much equipment that like you use for this kind of cold weather camping and um, most of the, if not all the equipment actually is, is my stuff so um, nothing against Alex I'm just really kind of finicky about my gear so I I'm the one that always kind of packs it up each day he helped strike the tent and help put it up and all that so I mean you know don't get me wrong he always did want to help I'm just really finicky about my stuff I'm not sure when Marie arrived. It was kind of weird because she kind of walked up on us. We were expecting a car. And it was a whole mix-up with Google and, and weirdness. That's a bit of a story within itself that we'll probably talk about in the uh, the, the big commentary wrap-up. She's the one, actually, that took the shot. So one of my fears when doing canoe trips like this is that you're, that I'm kind of tired and anxious to get home. So you just kind of end up ru rushing through, putting the canoe on, and then it ends up launching off into the, the highway, creating a four-car pileup on the way home. <clears throat> I don't want to be that guy. So I always make sure I take my time with it and not just have it connected from the two points like usual, but also two safeties underneath. But that's it. End of adventure. Time to go home. Um, it was a really fun time, and I can't wait to do the last of it in the spring. Alex uh, was quite a trooper for this being his first adventure like this, and Maria, as always, was a ton of help. And uh, thanks for all y'all that kind of followed us on this adventure. If you hadn't seen the part one and two, please check them out. Um, like and subscribe, like it says there. And uh, thanks again, and uh, take care. I think that might be the one, sir. <laughs>